clientele prior to going to school. So I was doing hair out of the house before I even got my cosmetology license. Mm -hmm. So when I went to school, um, when there, you know, when there was time, when, when it came time for me to be able to do clients, my clients just end up coming to the school instead of me doing hair at home. And so, uh, I actually was in school doing hair like, like I was working in a salon. I had a full clientele. Um, so of course, when I graduated and got my license, um, I went straight into a booth rental salon and I had a full clientele. Now you asked about, uh, having your own clientele versus, right. um, walk-ins and different things. Um, I never really had an issue with that because I always had my, my own clientele. The only time I had to really, um, seek clients was when I moved. So I did hair 10 years in California. Then I moved to Seattle, Washington, and I had to build my clientele there. And I lived there for 18 years. And then I also lived in Texas. So I'm licensed in, I'm licensed in three states. I'm licensed in California, Texas, and Washington. Now, let, me, so, let me stop you. Let me stop we, you right there. So you, mm -hmm, you actually have mm -hmm. to get licensed for those states in order to do hair? Yes. Every state you have to be licensed in. Now, you you don't necessarily have to take a test in every state because some states honor other states. Like California, um, Texas honored California. I didn't have to take a test. But when I went to Washington, Washington didn't honor California. I actually had to take the test in Washington. Okay, okay. So let's, let's, talk, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk here, man, because... Mm -hmm. oh, I I I I have I I got mixed feelings when it when it comes to ladies hair. Now listen, I okay. Listen, I I get it. I I I understand it. You know, but I seen this. Okay, so I I I I did a video. I'm not sure if it's. I think it's on my Instagram because I don't fuck with TikTok no more. But. I did. I, I okay. think I did. Uh, I think I did like a voiceover, and I was asking that I actually seen this young lady, head full of hair, head full of hair. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. went and got her hair braided down to put some hair on top of it. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Listen, fly trucker. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. I'm a guy. I, I mm -hmm. you know, just give me a clean cut and a line up, and I'm good. But mm -hmm. what's 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 up with what's up with you with with, with the ladies in, in in the hair? Now I understand. Now I understand. Now you know after the Will Smith slap and the alop 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 Alope Ala alopecia. 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 I understand. Yeah. I, I understand that, you know, females go through that. But I heard a meme uh that was said in, in Facebook. Guys mm -hmm. call guys, us guys call it just balding. Women has to give it a name. <laughs> well, it, it is an actual thing. Go ahead. I had quite a I had quite a few clients. Well, I'm not going to say quite a few. I've had a few clients who battle with alopecia. And it's a serious thing. I totally understood. Matter of fact, when when the whole incident happened, I understood because some women handle it differently than others. Right. Some are very sensitive about it. And I actually had some clients who were very sensitive about it. I had a client, I'll speak on one client. Hers was so bad that I had to literally glue hair onto her head every two weeks to make her a hairstyle. Wow. Because that's how bad it was. You couldn't cover it. Um, I think, I want to say, maybe in the beginning stages of it, we were able to cover it. But then as it worsened and spread it, we weren't able to cover it. And then so we had to do methods to, to cover it so that she could be comfortable. You know, for a woman, you know, that whole uh, hair, hair is a woman's glory, that's not just, that's just not a saying. That's real. That's for real. So I understood it. And, and for Will to react, even though I, I don't agree with the way he reacted, but for him to react in the way that he did, there, there had to have been some backstory to that. Yeah, pretty much. 
for Jada to have to, for her to have to cut her hair off the way she did. And I never actually saw any of her posts or anything with her expressing how she felt about losing her hair. But for him to react like that, it had to have been something serious. Now, and I know firsthand about women who, who are sensitive about that. Now, you know, as I was, as I was saying, you know, I, I've seen the young mm-hmm. lady, you know, put, you know, put hair on top of her head. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm scratching mm-hmm. my head like, yo, you got hair. Why are you mm-hmm. putting hair? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a couple of females in the post came in and explained to me why it was, it was done. But I still, you know, me being the guy, the way mm-hmm. I am, I still don't mm-hmm. understand it. But, um, mm-hmm. but for, but I, I, I understand if, you know, for women that has a condition, like seriously, right. you know, on a for right. real tip, I, right. you know, you, you, you want your hair, you want to feel pretty, you want to feel confident and, and the hair gives that to you. But for the females mm-hmm. that, Who like, don't have a that, condition. that don't have a condition, right. that don't have right. a problem, that do have right. hair, but you just hair. Mm-hmm. You, you, you just go you choose and, to right. Mm-hmm. You you go and mm-hmm. braid it down to 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 the fact mm-hmm. that it's tight on your head, and then you choose mm-hmm. to put you know the glue on and and all like that. The mm-hmm. fly truck. Or, let me let me ask or you. Or the lace or the lace front. Right. <laughs> let me let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Do the chemicals mm-hmm. do the chemicals of doing that all the time? Do that at, do that really have a reaction? If you do not, okay, first, it, it can. Let me say that. It can. If you, if the person who is putting it on your head does not apply it correctly, and if you as the client are not keeping up with it, yes, it can. And I mean that by, um, so people frown their nose at relaxers. Relaxers, first of all, was not designed to make your hair bone straight. Relaxers were designed to relax the natural curl pattern and to make your hair more manageable. The rest of it, the blow drying and then the the curling or the flat ironing, that's where you get the straightness from. If you, if you, if you've left that chemical on that hair so long, uh, to to make it like a bone straight, you're, you you've killed pretty much all the bonds on the hair. Okay, okay. So now you go and you apply all this extra heat to it. What do you think? It's you you weakening. You're weakening your hair. Yes, the chemical will weaken the hair. That's why it's not designed to to be left on that long. It's only designed to relax the natural curl pattern for you to be able to manage your hair. Okay. Then when you go and you blow dry it, that's heat. Then you go and you apply your curling agents, rather it's a curling iron, or flat iron, that's even more heat. So yes, if if you don't do it correctly, it can it, it can break that your hair will break off. Yes. Okay. That's... But you have to know what you're doing. And that's why it's see, always see, that's I'm, why it's I always was... good to go to a licensed cosmetologist, huh? Exactly. Exactly. And one that knows what they're doing because you have some cosmetologists and I'm going to say it. You have some out there that have no clue about and what you should do. See, I, I'm, a, I'm a hair specialist. That's what I was. I specialized in healthy hair. Yeah, I was the bomb at cutting, coloring, styling. You know, I did weave. Weave was not my big thing because, again, I'm a hair specialist. So I specialize in your hair. Okay. Not okay. the addition of hair. You see what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So, okay. Go fly, yeah. trucker. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wasn't no joke. Just like I ain't no joke in this trucking industry, I wasn't no joke in the hair field as well. Now, se- now <laughs> let segue- me just put that out there. Now, segueing <laughs> into that, let me, before we segue into that, why did you, mm-hmm. why, why did you, I mean, 30 years deep? I'm glad, I'm you, glad you asked. 30 years deep, you I'm was an you owner, you, you, I, uh-huh. and you still got the skills, and you still got the, got the, the, the licenses. Why you, why, why, why you gave it up? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you why. 
Social I, media. The hair industry, no. Mm-mm. Well, it, 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 let me let you know. Okay, now. I don't. I don't like the. I don't like that. I don't like those uh, cosmetologists, YouTubers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, and I'm, and I'm mm-hmm. just, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Be honest. I go ahead. Took, I actually took the time to get to go out and be trained correctly to know what I'm doing. So you know, if any of my clients ever come to the salon, I watch certain stuff on YouTube. Oh well, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want, literally, I don't want to hear about somebody who has no license that, that just pretty much, okay, you can do your own hair pretty good. So does that mean that you can tell, you can sit and tell somebody else what they need to do with their hair? Speak their on hair, Their hair ain't even like your hair. You know what I mean? You, you got two different textures of hair, you know, two different curl patterns of hair. Is it, so how, how do you feel that, you're, that, that, that you can go on YouTube and tell somebody else what they need to do about their hair? And I'm just being honest. I'm not, and I'm not trying to offend. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just speaking the truth. And this is how we cosmetologists feel because we took the time out to get educated and licensed to know what it is we're doing. Okay. So I'll, I'll speak on why I retired. You spoke on the young lady who went and sat and got her hair braided, got a hair full of head, ha- head full of hair, and got it braided down to to throw on a wig or whatever the case. Right. That's one of the reasons I retired. The industry has changed. It has changed. You have very few people now who actually go to the salon and get their hair done um, on a regular basis. And that actually cares about the upkeep of their hair. It's to the point now where people just, you know, the, the it, it's, society is just so fast paced. You know, let me just go get this wig out the closet. Uh, 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 let me pick one of these 25 wigs that I got sitting in here out the closet and put on my head and get going about my business. Instead of taking the actual time to go get your hair done. And I'm going to speak on the cosmetologist as well. Go I ain't going to leave him out. Go hmm. ahead now. Okay. So, yeah. So, you'd rather put one of, one of 25 wigs on instead of going sitting and, and allowing man. Let me tell you how precious. It is to be able to sit back and allow somebody to massage your head, to shampoo your hair, and to give you a conditioning treatment. Their scalp uh, massages, the manipulate man, it's wonderful. Do you not deserve that? I, I, we we I raising feel, kids. I feel good right we now. We taking care of husbands. Man, I'm trying to tell you, we raise kids. We take care of husbands, we take care of the household, and we out there working. Do you not owe it to yourself to go sit down and allow somebody to pamper you? Man, hey, that's, that's the best feeling in the world. But let me get on this. I'm going to touch on this as well. A lot of the time that people have to sit in the salon, has also caused people to stop going to the salon. Yeah. There's no reason that the stylist should be overbooked where they're sitting in there hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours at a time to get their hair done. I get it. And and I and I also have to say, hey, I fall victim to it myself. Not that I overbook, but because I, I normally book on the hours. So if if you book a client, you only getting a, a shampoo and style. That's pretty much your hour. But if you get anything extra, whereas you know chemical work, color cutting, you know anything extra, it's going to take extra time. I did not. I didn't book for the extra time. I have to say I didn't. And a lot of times, my clients don't know what they need because they come and they sit down and they they entrust me. I know what it is they need. So. Sometimes you don't know until they come in, oh, that you need a touch up, you know, or, or oh, I need to, I need to clean this cut up for you or, oh, it's time for a color. Sometimes you don't know until they come in. So therefore that's taking up extra time and that's falling over into somebody else's time. Okay. But a lot okay. of things time I would do, I'd feed my clients. You know what I mean? We'd order lunch, everything, just because. To show you, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being patient. When you come in here, I understand that I've taken a little bit of extra time, but I want you to know that I appreciate you. Here, let's order lunch. That's what's up. That's what's up. 
And some, and you know, you know same thing with barbers. Like my my barbers, mm-hmm. uh, my my barber, I always I always play with him. I always you know always let him know that he's the only one that I would get up at six o'clock and wait until eight o'clock to the mm-hmm. because them hands mm-hmm. is always on point. Man, uh, fly Man, trucker. But, but that's Man. I don't like that. If you got an eight o'clock appointment, then be there at eight o'clock for your client. Now, that's one thing about me. My clients didn't have to really sit and wait on me to get to the salon. If your appointment, and I come in about 5.30, about 5, 5.30 in the morning. If that was your time, we there. That's what's up. Very, yeah. Very seldom can any of my clients say they have to sit and wait on me to get to the salon. So, Fly Trucker, 30 years yeah. deep in, in, in the salon mm-hmm. industry, what Mm-hmm. Where the hell did trucking come in at? Because I'm sure you did not have no semis backing up to your door, dropping you know, uh, <laughs> drop dropping off <laughs> no no not loads. What's what's up? Where 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 not the infatu- where the infatuation for trucking well, came in at? Well, so I spoke on um, the changing of the industry. That's what you know. I was burned out. I was burned out, and that's what made me retire from doing hair. I moved back to California, and um, after, what, four years of trying to build my clientele back up, and again, people not really coming in to get their hair done like they used to, you know, my son was in college, Uh, I I paid tuition for him, you know, and so I just wasn't going to, I, I wasn't going to allow my situation to speak into his future. So I retired and I went and got a regular job for about a, a year until um, a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, you know, you, you like driving, you know, because I, I, I even started Ubering part time a little bit um, just to make up the difference. Like I said, you know, to make sure my son, he, he had his own apartment, you know, he had to have his rent. He had, I had to have that tuition. I had to have whatever else extra he needed, you know. and so. Hey, as a mother, we do what we have to do to make sure that our children have what it is they need. Right. And guess what? That higher education is something he was going to need. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so, um, and so a friend of mine called me up and he said, hey, you like driving? You drive an Uber part time. I know you really ain't bringing in the kind of money you're used to bringing in. You know, um, have you ever thought about driving trucks? And he knew that I have always had a fascination with 18-wheelers. Never thought I wanted to drive or planned on driving. I just kind of wanted to ride. I just wanted to be a passenger in one of them, you know, for some reason. I don't know. And um, okay. and so and so after that, I said, you know, I thought about it. I said, hey, driving. I do have this crazy fascination with these 18-wheelers. Let me go see. So I, um, I, I was dating somebody at the time. He looked up some schools for me. And uh, Roadmaster was one of the schools. And uh, there happened to be one in California, in uh, Fontana, California. And I met with a recruiter, and I was enrolled the very next week. All right. So Roadmasters, of course, Roadmasters is being owned by uh, by Warner. Uh, Warner. When, mm-hmm. when, did you, when did you come into the industry? Because about time Warner came around and, and acquired world masters it was a little bit down the line so when did you come mm-hmm. in when did you come into the industry and was warner was one of the one of the companies that you drove for warner was the first company i drove for yes i did six months with warner i uh i came in let's see uh what's this 20 2022 17 2017 okay okay so you came yeah, in you 2017 came in, it's, yeah. you came you came in after me okay that's what's up that's mm-hmm. what's up all right mm-hmm. so yep. of, of course warner um driving for warner so i'm am i am i to assume that uh you 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 went in through the uh cdl program uh